You guys look amazing. Well, if we've never met before, if it's your first time here, my name is Brian. I love pastoring this amazing church full of amazing people that love God, and we want to see God do incredible things in people's lives. So thank you for being here. Hey, right from the start, I want to invite you back, because next week I'm starting a mystery series, a series about God's plans for your life. Now, I know you might be thinking, whoa, Brian, we just met. Slow it down a little bit. This is the first date. No, I want to invite you to come back and be committed these next four weeks, because it's going to be incredible. Well, today is Easter, and what is it that Easter is all about? What do you believe that Easter is all about? It made me start thinking. It made me start thinking about these three blondes who had died, who were standing outside the gates of heaven. St. Peter was there. The first blonde said, okay, we want to get into heaven. St. Peter said, well, if you're going to get into heaven, you're going to have to tell me what, what Easter is all about. She said, I know. I know what Easter is all about. Easter is about when you're with your family. And you're thankful for one another, and you have turkey. He said, no, that's Thanksgiving. That's not what Easter is about. Get out of here. The second blonde spoke up and said, I know what Easter is about. Easter is that time of year where we celebrate the birth of God's son. And on his birthday, we give gifts to everyone else. He said, no, it's not. That's Christmas. Get out of here. And finally, that third blonde said, I got this. I know what Easter is all about. Easter is a Christian holiday that coincides with the Jewish Passover, where they celebrate a man named Jesus who died, who was buried. They put him in a tomb. And three days later, and Peter's like, yes, three days later, three days later, he came out of that tomb. And if he sees his shadow, there's six more weeks of winter, and he goes back into the tomb. What is it that you believe about Easter? What is Easter really all about? Well, today we're going to jump in to that first Easter. We're going to jump into the moment where Jesus was betrayed by Judas, one of his disciples. He was passed through the night from the religious leaders to Pilate, to Herod, back to Pilate. Jesus was mocked. He was spit on. He was beaten up. And we pick up the text in Matthew chapter 27, verse 15. Now, it was the governor's custom each year during the Passover celebration to release one prisoner to the crowd, anyone that they wanted. This year, there was a notorious prisoner, a man named, help me out, church, Barabbas. Let's say like we mean it. One, two, three, Barabbas. What's Barabbas's bio? Have you ever heard about Barabbas? Who is Barabbas? We have Jesus standing there, Barabbas standing there, and Pilate he, he gets to make a decision to kind of appease the Jews. The Roman Empire oversaw the Jews, and he kind of wanted to, you know, kind of have a good relationship. So once a year, he would release a prisoner. And here we have Jesus, an innocent man, and Barabbas, a guilty man. What's Barabbas's bio? Well, Barabbas's bio was that we don't really know that much about him. Barabbas's bio is that somehow he did step into something. He made a decision to revolt against Rome, the Roman Empire. You know, there's don't mess with Texas. Well, there's don't mess with Rome. He revolted against that Rome, against Rome. And in the midst of that, in the midst of the chaos, he committed a crime. He committed murder. And so that is why he is in prison. However, what's the deeper level? How did Barabbas really make the decision to do what he did? Because all of us have a bio. All of us are here, and we're sitting on, we're sitting in the seats, and we've gotten to where we've gotten to in life because of the decisions that we made. See, somehow, Barabbas, he, he had to make a, dis, a decision that went different than most of his friends. See, the Jewish people, they did not like Rome. They did not like the Romans. They didn't like how they lived their life. They didn't like how they, how they lived against God. And they hated a lot of the, Rome, the Romans. And so, Barabbas, however... Something happened. Maybe it was bitterness. Maybe it was some betrayal. However, hatred had a hold of his heart. And he said, hey, enough is enough. I'm taking matters into my own hands. And he made that decision. He said, you know what? I'm going to revolt against Rome. Well, here we have Jesus and Barabbas. The story continues. Verse 17. It's baffling because the crowds are getting a little hostile at Pilate's palace. Verse 17, which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Just then, as Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife, he got a note from her. That's nice. This message, leave that innocent man alone. I suffered through a terrible nightmare about him last night. 
Meanwhile, the leading priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask Barabbas to be released and for Jesus to be put to death. So the governor asked again, which of these two do you want me to release? Jesus or Barabbas? Barabbas or Jesus? Who do you want me to release? Pilate responded, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? They shouted back, crucify him. Why, Pilate demanded, what crime has he committed? But the mob roared even louder and louder, crucify him. Have you ever thought for a moment, where was all the people that Jesus had helped in this moment? Where was the blind man? Where was the lame? Where was the leper? Where was the bleeding woman? Where was Jairus and his daughter? Where was Zacchaeus? Where were the disciples? Where were all those who were fed? Where were all those who were healed? Where were all the people when Jesus needed them the most, and yet they were absent. And in this moment, I mean, it's common sense. Who do we choose? Jesus, who's innocent, or Barabbas, who's guilty? I mean, it's common sense. It's like, what do you choose, ketchup or mayo? You choose ketchup. You live in Illinois. Do you choose Cubs or do you choose Cardinals? Common sense. Cubs, you live in Illinois. I mean, common sense. Jordan or LeBron? Jordan. The other people were praying for you. I mean, it's common sense. Any rational person would go, Jesus, Jesus, let Jesus go. But the crowds begin to go crazy. Pilate's getting nervous, and he's like, uh, uh, he's getting persuaded. Have you ever been in a situation where just you saw something about to happen, and the situation was getting messier and messier by the moment? Have you ever been in one of those moments? Several months ago, I was at my son's third place championship basketball game. That's awesome. Third place, right? I mean, he's still a loser. He's just the third best loser. And I love him. You got to keep him humble. Got to keep him humble. So we're taking the photos underneath the basket. The kids are smiling. They've got their third place trophies. We're taking the photos. And then about 10 feet away from me, this four-year-old who my son had played with the entire game, Legos, Miniature Legos, the entire game. He decides to lose his M&Ms. And when I say lose his M&Ms, I don't mean the M&Ms in the pack. I mean the M&Ms he already ate, went down to his stomach, came up out of his mouth, and there they are. A pile, an it, a thing. Everyone runs like one of those viral videos at Christmas time at Best Buy shopping for the, the gifts. Everyone is gone. We're still there taking the photos, holding our breath as the... Wonderful M&M aroma smell fills the room. And I'm standing there. I'm like, did this just happen? Did, did anybody else see this? Everyone has moved away from this pile. Yet, in the corner of my eye, I notice a lady come into the gymnasium. This lady is texting on her phone. This lady is not paying attention to anyone. She is singing that song from Sesame Street that Big, Big Bird used to sing. La, 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 I think. Because she's not paying attention. And I'm watching her as I take the photos, take one step after the next step. See, there's a reason we shouldn't text and walk, people. She is walking and walking. And so I'm here. I can do nothing about it. I, it's inevitable about what is about to happen here. And so I did what most of you would have done. I took my camera from my children's pictures and moved it towards the lady for a future illustration. Don't you judge me. Don't judge me. Don't, don't even. Don't even do that. But there's, there's nothing I can do. Yet then my wife, who had disappeared, she comes out of nowhere, and she sees this lady texting, singing some la-la song, lost in loony land, just inches away from this pile. It. Thing. Now, it's in that moment that everything just kind of slows down. It's like slow-mo. In my mind, I'm like, no. <laughs> and Danielle, a good-hearted person, she's a little risky. She has the ability to rescue this person. 
also she's going to have the willingness that if she does step in to rescue this person, the willingness to walk all the way home because she's not riding in the car if it doesn't work out so well. She steps in. No. And the lady's like, you know, texting. She looks down. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Barabbas is in the same situation. Things are getting messier. He's just moments away. He thinks his life is about to be over. Some of you today, you're in a messy situation. Some spiritually are in a messy situation. See, because before God, we're all messy. All of us have made mistakes. And our mess separates us from a holy God. And this holy God, that he, our sin has to be dealt with in order for us to be made right with God. And Barabbas is in this messy situation. And the crowd is cheering and cheering. And they're cheering, Barabbas, release Barabbas instead of Jesus. And what does Pilate say in Matthew 27, verse 26? Pilate says, it says that Pilate released Barabbas to them. He ordered Jesus flogged with the lead-tipped whip and then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. And we know that Jesus would die. He would be buried and he would rise again. Acts chapter 2. Verse 24 tells us, but God, turn to your neighbor and say, but God. But God brought him from death back to life because he destroyed the pains of death because death could not hold him down. How many of you are thankful that death couldn't hold Jesus down? I envision Jesus getting up out of the grave and was like, Pilate got fooled, the people got fooled, death got fooled, the devil got fooled, and he was like, got him, I'm still alive. Death could not hold Jesus Christ down. But what, what can we learn from the life of Barabbas? Because here we have Jesus and Barabbas, two revolutionaries, one revolting against Rome, one revolting against maybe the religious establishment. One a sinner, one sinless. One messy, one Messiah. What can we learn? From Barabbas, the bio of Barabbas, because Barabbas, it's a glimpse of your life and my life. We're just like him. We're standing before a great judgment one day. And if our guilt, if our condemnation, if our prison sentence hasn't been dealt with, man, we're in trouble. It's going to be messy. Let me ask you, have you ever been accused of something like who took my phone charger is a popular saying in our home I know you took it you got it man mine doesn't have the mark on it this one's all bent up have you ever been accused of something I mean how does it feel to be accused of something did you take that did you, or in our home, did you eat that? I know you ate that. I can tell by the saliva. You ate that. You took that. You borrowed that without asking. Have you ever been accused of something? I mean, think about Barabbas. Think about Jesus. Barabbas was guilty, and he was about to become innocent. Jesus was innocent, and he was about to become guilty. What can we learn from the life of Barabbas? We can learn that your life, you can be cleared. Your record can be cleared. That's right, your sin. There's got to be a payment for your sin. All have sinned, and the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. That's right. Yet, when we receive Christ, that death sentence is removed. Some of you today, you're on death row. Your death sentence, when you step out of this life into the next one, your, your sin has not been satisfied. You've not been made right with God. And the only way to be made right with God is through the forgiveness of your sins. It's through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's the, it's the greatest event in human history. It marks our calendars. It changes everything. This is the one thing that this whole day is about. It's about a man who predicted his own death. He came back to life. And he sits at the right hand of the Father. And one day he's coming back. And Jesus has cleared our records. Hey, does the devil ever throw your record back at you? Does he ever tell you, remember what you did? Remember what you said? Remember what was in your heart? 
man, you're sitting here today, but remember all of that? And the devil will accuse us. And he'll try to bring back our past, yet our record's been cleared. Now, I do have one speeding ticket. I'm confessing. I'm in church. That was in another state. I only have one ticket in this state. (laughs) It was for a rolling stop. Apparently, you have to completely stop at stop signs, even when you're in a hurry. (laughs) My wife tells me that I drive like a grandpa, and I'm okay with that. So now, you know, we're going to pull up to the stop sign, and there's going to be the one, two, three. And I, I this, this time when I got this ticket, someone told me, you can get it off your record. I was like, okay, I'll walk in. I'm here to get this off my record. Well, you're a handsome young fella. We'll take it off, sure. No, they said, we'll take it off your record, but there's going to be a cost. Jesus takes our record. He clears them. But let's not forget the cost. Let's not forget the cost of freedom. Let's not forget that an innocent man became guilty so that you and I, who are guilty, could become set free. Let's not forget that cost. And Easter is a reminder of that cost that was paid for us. Man, whatever it takes. Jesus was willing to do whatever it takes. The bio of Barabbas. What else does it tell us about Barabbas? Well, it tells us, like your sin and my sin in Colossians, that When it comes to our records, Colossians 2, 13 through 14, it says, you were dead because of your sins. He forgave all of your sins. Let's say all together. One, two, three, all. All sins. He he forgave everything, all sins. He canceled the record of the charges. He canceled the record. He's cleared the record against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. Whoa. Whoa. Barabbas was condemned to die, yet just in a moment, in a moment, he got up that day. They got him out of the jail cell, bound up in chains. What he thought would probably be his last moment on earth, what he thought was just moments before he would, he would go as a criminal to be crucified on the cross. He heard the people cheering, Barabbas, release Barabbas in just minutes He was released. Can you imagine how long today it takes for people to be released, for them to be pardoned? It can take months, years for an innocent person to be set free. Yet Barabbas, a guilty person, was set free in just minutes. Hey, if you've been carrying around your record, your life's record of things that you just dropped the ball on, you messed up, hey, today... Your record can be clear. What else can we learn from the bio of Barabbas? Well, we can learn not only that your record can be cleared, but you can have a release date. I love release dates. Release dates on shoes, release dates on new songs. I'm always, oh, when's that album coming out? When's that new retro Jordan release date? I can't wait for that. I can't wait. When's that new ride at the park coming out? Release dates. Easter is your release date. Have you released it? Have you come out of the tomb when the friendship wrecked, when the business failed, when they said forever and it didn't work out? Are you still carrying that with you? Or this Easter, could you let it die in the tomb and walk out of the tomb into freedom? Turn to someone next to you and say, today's your release date. You got a new album coming out. You didn't even know it. It's a signature shoe. It's a release date. Would you let it go or are you going to just another Easter? Let the accusations of the accuser say you're this and you're that. Are you finally going to let Jesus forgive you? Are you finally going to walk out or run out? of that tomb, with all of your past and all of your old life behind you, into freedom, into a new life that God has for you. God has that for you today. He has that for me today. But we got to make that choice. we got to make that decision. Barabbas was standing there. I can't imagine what was going through his mind. And Jesus, again, standing there. Maybe Barabbas had heard about Jesus. Maybe he hadn't. 
Now, whatever happened to Barabbas? He's in the scriptures. There's a few verses about him. What happened to him? Well, the Bible doesn't tell us. The Bible doesn't tell us, did Barabbas get released and then he went into hiding? Did, did, he, did he have that moment of, oh, my goodness, physically, my record was cleared. In a moment, I was condemned to die, yet now I'm free to live. Did he go back to Golgotha? Did he look up where the cross was? And did he, did he thank God where he was there? Did he run to the cross? And did he thank God? We don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us what happened to Barabbas. He, we don't know what decision he made, but you and I, we, we get to make a decision. We get to make a decision. We get to think about Easter. What is Easter all about? Again, Easter is when Jesus, the innocent, would be murdered. And when Barabbas, the murderer, would be set free. What is it really that, that set Barabbas free? Was it the power of Pilate that set Barabbas free? Was it the persuasion of the people or ultimately, was it the love of God? I think it was the love of God. It was the love of God that Jesus looked at Barabbas and said, you know what? Man, before the cross, I'll step in now and take your place. I'll become guilty so that you can become innocent. Even though you're not innocent and I'm not guilty, I will step into your place and I will take it to Calvary. I'll take it to the cross. Have you received the love of God? And you know you've received the love of God? You've downloaded it into the DNA of who you are? You put your faith in Christ? Because there's different people here this weekend. There are some who are far from God. If you just be honest, you're, you're really far from God. And you know about the holiday. You maybe know what the culture says about Easter, but... Really, Easter is about God doing this one thing, dying for you, coming back to life for you. And if you're far from God, the good news is today could be your release date. You can receive the forgiveness for your sins. You can have a brand new start. And I believe that until Jesus is the center of your life, your life, your marriages, your marriage, your relationships, they'll never be what they could be. There are some today who are in honor of April Fool's. You're honestly an April Fool's follower. You maybe prayed a prayer one time. You kind of check into God's house on your own schedule. You're really doing your own deal. And you've really never surrendered to the lordship of Jesus, his leadership in your life. And, I mean, you're only fooling yourself. Yet today, you could make a decision and go, God, to the best of my ability, I want to follow you. I want to follow your word. I want to be a part of your church. I want to be a part of your team. Maybe today you'd make that change. There's some here today who are faithful, and there's all in between. Wherever you are today, let's look, let's look at the bio of Barabbas. Let's step in and realize that just as Barabbas was standing there, Jesus was standing there, and Jesus stepped in. He took his place. That's what Easter is about. Jesus took his place, and he came back to life. He conquered it all. Are you going to stay in your mess? Or are you going to receive the freedom that God offers you? What is it that you believe about Easter? Let's pray. Father, I thank you. For your word today. I thank you for your truth today. God, we thank you for the life of Barabbas. This small glimpse that we see where the guilty became innocent and the innocent became guilty. That God, you took all of our shame, you took all of our sin onto that cross. And Lord, you canceled our debts, you made our records clear. God, you released us from our past, you released us from our shame, and you released us into the life that you have called us to live.
If you're here today and you would just be honest and say, hey, Brian, I'm far from God. Or maybe I've, I've kind of been an April Fool's follower. One day I am, one day I'm not. I want to give you the opportunity to receive Christ right where you are. Know your sins are forgiven. God will give you a brand new start. Hey, church, let's pray this all together. Sometimes we need teammates. Let's pray this all together. Let's say, Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on a cross for me, for coming back to life so that I could live. Today, I receive your son, Jesus. I receive his Holy Spirit and all that he has for my life. Today I know that my record is clear. Today I know that it's my release date. And God, I thank you for all that you've done for me. Today, you're my Lord and Savior. If you prayed that prayer with every head bowed, would you just lift up your hand? If you said, God, I'm going to follow you, would you just lift up your hand? Let God see you made that decision. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for your honesty. Is there anybody else? You just lift it up. Let God know, God, I'm not ashamed of you. God, I prayed that prayer and I meant it. Father, you see those that have made that commitment today on Easter Sunday. God, today, their record is clear. God, today is their release date, Lord. We know that the Bible tells us that all of heaven is celebrating and rejoicing. And Lord, so just as they're celebrating our church together, Lord, we celebrate them. We welcome them into the family of God. And all God's people said, amen. Come on, church.